When you think of the best receivers in the NFL, who do you think of? Justin Jefferson? Devontae Adams? C.D. Lamb? Tyreek Hill? Obviously. But one name that deserves to be in the conversation with all of them is Debo Samuel. Since entering the league, Samuel has been one of the best and most dominant receivers in the NFL, including being the most versatile, not only serving as a huge threat through the air, but in the run game as well. Debo has been an absolute game changer for Kyle Shanahan's offense and the Niners, who are very happy that he fell all the way to the 36th overall pick. But how? How did he fall? What happened to the players that went before him? In this video, we'll quickly be going over all 35 players taken before Debo Samuel in the 2019 draft and how their careers have panned out. Starting with the first overall pick by the Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. This would make three straight seasons of the reigning Heisman Trophy winner being the first overall pick in the draft, with Baker Mayfield and Joe Burrow being drafted the two years prior. Murray had just come off of his junior season at Oklahoma, in which he threw for 4,361 yards, 42 touchdowns, and seven interceptions, making Murray the absolute favorite to be the first overall pick in 2019. However, Murray was also drafted in Major League Baseball in 2018 as the Oakland Athletics selected Murray with the ninth overall pick, causing Murray to make a big decision when his college career would end. Ultimately, Murray chose to play football, giving the Arizona Cardinals their quarterback of the future. Murray started off his career strong, winning Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2019, followed by two Pro Bowl seasons. Since, Murray has dealt with some big-time injuries, but when he's on the field, he's nothing short of a franchise quarterback for the Cardinals. Going from the 2019 Offensive Rookie of the Year to the 2019 Defensive Rookie of the Year, the San Francisco 49ers took Nick Bosa with the second overall pick. Bosa was the undeniable best defensive player in the draft, and he fell right into the Niners' lap. Yeah, they got both Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel in the same draft. Insane. Much like Kyler Murray, Bosa has dealt with some major injuries, but when he's on the field, he's arguably the best edge rusher in the game, even winning Defensive Player of the Year in 2022 with a league-leading 18 and a half sacks. Bosa remains one of the best defensive players in football, making this the perfect pick by San Francisco. Pick three is yet another All-Pro defensive lineman, another one, as the New York Jets selected Quinn and Williams. Williams has proved to be an absolute monster. After an injury-riddled first couple of seasons and a quiet start, Williams absolutely broke out in 2022, being named First Team All-Pro. He's a lead in the run game and a pressure cooker in the trenches, whipping up 12 sacks from the interior. That doesn't happen very often. Williams has completely transformed the Jets' defense since being drafted, and you could argue that he's the best defensive tackle in football. The fourth pick in the draft was rough, and people knew it on draft night. Mike Mayock and John Gruden led the Oakland Raiders to take a massive risk and draft Clellan Farrell. Farrell was never projected as anything more than a late first round pick, but somehow ended up as the fourth player off the board. After four rough seasons as a Raider, Farrell would sign a one-year, $2.5 million contract with the Bang Bang Niner Gang, where he currently serves as a depth piece contributor on a loaded defensive line. The next player was actually vocal about wanting to be drafted by the Raiders, but somehow they tried to be too cute and passed. At fifth overall, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Devin White. White has been a defensive cornerstone in Tampa, playing alongside veteran linebacker Levante David. Solid pick. Pick six, the New York Giants shockingly chose Daniel Jones. Danny Dimes has been a very, very up and down player for the Giants. Jones would have a good rookie year, throwing for 3,027 yards and 24 touchdowns, but there was a glaring turnover issue with Jones that lingered in his play. In 2022, Jones improved in limiting turnovers, but since then, I don't know if Giant fans are necessarily excited about their future with Daniel at quarterback. His future is unclear, making this a very questionable pick for the Giants. Pick seven, the Jacksonville Jaguars chose edge rusher Josh Allen from Kentucky. Allen would start his career off hot, recording 10 and a half sacks in his rookie season, and he's done nothing but improve recording a career-high 17 and a half sacks in 2023, making his second Pro Bowl. This Josh Allen is a stud, 
and was a fantastic pick for Jacksonville. The Raiders really like to make things complicated, don't they? But anyway, tight end TJ Hawkinson was picked by the Detroit Lions at eight. Since being drafted, Hawkinson has been among the best tight ends in all of football. And after a trade to the Minnesota Vikings in 2022 that paired him alongside Justin Jefferson, Hawkinson has truly taken off. With the ninth overall pick, the Buffalo Bills got Ed Oliver, who is currently one of the best defensive tackles in the league. There's a few of those in this draft class. The Pittsburgh Steelers selected linebacker Devin Bush with the 10th pick. Bush had a promising start to his career, but then tapered into a backup. The next four picks all turned out to be great players. Jonah Williams to the Bengals, Rashawn Gary to the Packers, Christian Wilkins to the Dolphins, and Chris Lindstrom to the Falcons. Williams and Lindstrom are both fantastic offensive linemen for their respective teams, with Lindstrom even making all pro teams in 2022 and 2023. Gary is very productive pass rusher for Green Bay, and Wilkins is, again, one of the best defensive tackles in football. We told you there'd be a few of those in this draft. With the 15th overall pick, the Washington Redskins at the time would select Dwayne Haskins. This is a very devastating story. Haskins would only play two seasons in Washington, never producing how they expected him to. After a few seasons and only 13 starts, Haskins would sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, Haskins would never play a game as a Steeler, as he tragically passed away on April 9, 2022. He would be struck by a dump truck trying to cross the interstate while training in Florida. The future could have been bright for Haskins. May his soul rest in peace. The next couple of players are two elite defenders, Brian Burns to the Panthers and Dexter Lawrence to the Giants. Burns is a game-changing edge rusher for Carolina. Lawrence is, once again, one of the best defensive tackles in football and is arguably the best. There are a couple more great picks in this loaded draft. Next up at pick 18 would be Garrett Bradbury heading to the Minnesota Vikings, where he's currently the starting center and a pretty good one at that. Pick 19, the Tennessee Titans took Jeffrey Simmons, yet another great defensive tackle to come to this draft class. What a draft for the D-line. Picks 20 and 21 are two pretty good players. Noah Fant to the Broncos and Darnell Savage to the Packers. Fant was traded to the Seattle Seahawks as part of the Russell Wilson deal, where he's been the starting tight end. Savage has earned a lot of M's in his bank account at safety for Green Bay. The next two picks are both offensive linemen, one much better than the other. Pick 22 was Andre Dillard to the Bengals, and pick 23 was Titus Howard to the Texans. Dillard didn't last in Cincinnati and has been a backup for the Tennessee Titans, while Howard is a solid guard for the Texans. With their second first round pick, the Oakland Raiders actually got a contributing pick. They took Josh Jacobs from Alabama with the 24th overall pick, He's been a great story for the Raiders, rising out of poverty and homelessness to become an NFL star. You can watch his story on our channel. The world knew Jacobs was special after he finished second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting in 2019. He led the league in rushing in 2022 with 1,653 rushing yards. Jacobs has been a stud when healthy. The 25th overall pick would see the first wide receiver off the board as the Baltimore Ravens chose Marquise Hollywood Brown. Hollywood had won 1,000-yard season in Baltimore before being traded to the Arizona Cardinals, where he had an injury-riddled season as the Cardinals' wide receiver won in 2023. His future's up in the air, but Hollywood is a very serviceable receiver. Pick 26. The Washington Redskins selected Montez Sweat, who has truly broken out as an elite edge rusher after being traded to the Chicago Bears in the 2023 season. Sweat ended the season with 12 and a half sacks and somehow led both the Commanders and the Bears in sacks for the season. That's some crazy stuff. Montez Sweat is a monster. Pick 27, the Raiders had another one and they took Jonathan Abram. Abram showed some huge potential in his first few seasons, but he didn't survive the head coaching carousel in Vegas, even playing for three different teams in 2022. In 2023, he served as a backup safety in New Orleans. The next few picks were all players who didn't pan out. 
Jerry Tillery to the Los Angeles Chargers at 28, LJ Collier to the Seattle Seahawks at 29, and DeAndre Baker to the New York Giants at 30. Tillery and Collier are both backups on different teams, while Baker is a much more controversial player. Baker would play one season with the Giants and two with the Chiefs before being taken to court for armed robbery. Baker would ultimately not be convicted, but he'd never play another snap in the NFL. Pick 31 was Caleb McGarry to the Atlanta Falcons, where he currently serves as a starting tackle. The last pick in the first round was another receiver, Neil Harry, to the New England Patriots. Harry never recorded a season with more than 309 yards with the Patriots, before eventually becoming a Bear and a Viking. Harry didn't play a single snap in 2023, and his future in the NFL is up in the air. Debo Samuel was right there, Coach Belichick. The next two picks are above average cornerbacks. Byron Murphy to the Arizona Cardinals and Rock Yassin to the Indianapolis Colts. Both have had some solid seasons, but both are now average at best on different teams. The 35th pick would be Jawan Taylor to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he would be the starting right tackle for four years before signing with the Kansas City Chiefs, where he currently serves as the starting right tackle. Taylor is good, but gets penalized a lot, leading the NFL in penalties in 2023. And here we are, pick 36, Debo Samuel. You all know how good he is. How would you redraft the 2019 first and early second rounds? Does Debo Samuel go top 10 overall? Let us know in the comments. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps us make better videos for you. As always, thank you for watching The Halftime Show. See you all in the next one.